My name is David de Rothschild. I'm the author of the Global Warming Survival Handbook. For me, it was about, you know, we hear of all these, you know, terrible things on the horizon and all the small things that we can do, the everyday actions that we can take to engage ourselves. And I thought, well, what does that really mean? You know, what are those everyday actions we hear about? Changing the light bulb is one we often hear, turning off the tap when you brush your teeth. But I wanted it to be something which was more about a skill set. It was about taking basic actions and showing them what they really were. So taking a light bulb, unscrewing it, screwing it back in, going out, it takes very little time but has a huge amount of impact. So really, for me, it was about saying, how do we make a book that was slightly humorous, that um, showed the sort of the dark side in a humorous way through um, if an all else fails section in the book. Um, but it was also about you know, showing how much effort was required, um, which is really not a lot, um, and creating a book that would um, give people you know, simple actions that they could do in a fun way. Because, you know, we've got a big problem ahead of us and it was about creating something that would um, hopefully inspire people to go out and take at least one thing and do it. Um, and giving them a pathway. So, you know, how much time, how much effort and what the reward was, um, was a big part of it for us. Um, so, I'm very excited and I hope you enjoy it. For me, my sort of aha moment um, was probably in Antarctica. I was um, fortunate to be involved in an expedition, a um, 1600 kilometer voyage um, across one of the most majestic and probably environmentally challenged continents on our planet. You know, there I was, no more than a speck of dust on this sort of endless horizon. Um, and, you know, it was that thing of just that sort of immense rawness that you get in, in, in this environment that I was sort of overwhelmed and suddenly. It kind of clicked that, you know, if we didn't do something about this situation, it's not our planet that's, you know, going to be um, at peril, it's going to be us. If we didn't take, you know, every action possible right now to do something about our changing climate, we were putting ourselves in peril. Um, you know, I was fortunate, I grew up outside. I was, you know, dragged by the ear, get outside, come back and, you know, when you've broken a leg or it's dinner. And, um, you know, I was so immersed in, in sort of the natural world as a, as a young kid always engaged, always fascinated by how the natural world works um, and, you know, and all the little bits, the bugs and the trees and the plants. And, and then to have you know, these other opportunities to go into these fragile ecosystems as well was something that to me kind of just sort of tipped it over the edge and made me realize that this was something that I wanted to dedicate my life to and hopefully could make an impact. For me, the biggest sort of realization was during a trip to Greenland. Um, it's often not talked about as much as Antarctica or the North Pole, but Greenland is a, a very significant um, you know, ice cap um, and one that is changing very rapidly. We were there in early May and I remember we were, we were doing a kiting trip across Greenland and the idea was to kite from east to west and west to east and so you're waiting for the wind and the first three days that we were on the continent and we've got all our, you know, our, our gear wrapped up and you know, we're sitting there and you know, ready to get onto the ice cap. And we finally get up onto the ice cap, no wind, sitting in our tent. And it was 25, 30 degrees in the tent. I mean, it was so hot. I was sitting there in my swimming trunks, nothing more. Swimming trunks and a pair of boots. And I remember lying on my sled, sunbathing, thinking, this is insane. Um, you know, and before our very eyes, we were seeing huge pooling of water on the surface. And this is some of the stuff that scientists are talking about now, is that the pooling of the water is then slipping down into between the rock surface and where the ice sits. So it's creating a thing called a moulin, which is like an underwater lake. And so you're getting this, this possibility that the weight of the ice now can just slip straight off. So we were seeing these huge kind of underground waterfalls being created um, right in front of our very eyes. I mean, it's an amazing thing to see, but it's also a, a sort of a wake-up call. The question of the environment being such a large issue is often, it's very hard to kind of grasp as an individual your kind of personal involvement in the problems. And I would say that there's two camps. You're either part of the problem or you can become part of the solution. And the most important thing, I think, for every individual is to just actually do something. One thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It, you know, but we are all, every individual, is having an impact. And I think it's about saying, how do we do something? You know, you can either sort of say, well, I'm just me and I, you know, I can't, you know, I'm not making a difference really. You know, I'll go back and someone else will do something. So if we can change that mindset and actually say, okay, I am having an impact and it can be something as simple as refusing a plastic bag 
But I think not doing anything is the big danger and saying, I'm, you know, I can't make a difference because you can make a difference if you just try and do something. <laughs> Have you bought the book yet? If not, why not? <laughs> so one chance to save the planet. If you don't do anything else is buy the book. <laughs> it's a very important thing.